In this video, we're gonna take a look at Alone Together, a jazz standard that I think everyone needs to know. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for another one of my tutorials. Alone Together is a jazz standard that gets called at jam sessions a lot. And I think the reason why that is, it's a fairly simple tune. It doesn't have a lot of chord changes, and it's in typically D minor, which musicians like to play, especially pianists. It falls under their fingers nicely, but also there's a bunch of two fives. So it's a good tune to learn so that you can apply those types of changes to other jazz standards. And this came as a suggestion by one of our subscribers, uh, Maurizio Miotti. He commented, I think it could be useful to publish jazz videos following two different paths one dedicated to solo jazz piano and the other dedicated to the approach of playing piano with a rhythm section. So I've decided to do just that because I think that's a great idea. So in this video, we're gonna do the solo jazz piano approach and I've written out an entire arrangement note for note and I'm gonna go through that. But think of it like an introduction to when the jazz trio comes in. Because in a playing situation, sometimes what piano players do is they play extended intros. So just before we get started, think about giving this video a thumbs up at some point because it really helps the channel when you do that. And also, if you haven't subscribed to us yet, please think about that by the end of the video and just hit the little bell when you subscribe and we'll notify you of all the upcoming videos that we're making. We're gonna tackle this arrangement that I've written out note for note of Alone Together as an introduction to like a jazz trio situation. So often on the bandstand, what happens is the piano player will take an extended introduction. They'll play the tune through once or twice, taking some creative liberties with it. And then you'll either count off or the piano player will play something that's in tempo to bring the rest of the band in. And we're gonna talk about what the piano player does in that trio situation in the next video. I'll actually post a link to that once that video is ready at the end of this video. But for now, let's take a look at the introduction, this rubato arrangement that I've done. And I think that's the first word that you should notice about it is the word rubato, which essentially means creatively free, rhythmic manipulation and creative liberties with the melody lines. So nuances, things like that. So the first thing you'll notice is that in the left hand, I'm not following this D minor to E half diminished seven to A seven. That's the tune. We're not doing that. We're taking it out of tempo and we're playing this left hand line cliche, which is starting here on the D minor chord straight. And then it's, this note is raising from A to B flat, which is the sharp five or the flat six, and then it's going to six. Back to the sharp five. So let's play the introduction. Let's take some liberties with the melody and don't play it as is because as is sounds like this. We're gonna take some creative elements and put them in there like this. You see what we've done there? We just got this line cliche going and we're playing the melody a little bit different. So let's scroll down a little bit and start tackling where these changes come. So we've got A half diminished seventh to D seven. So these two chords right here. Okay. And what we're gonna do with those is just play leading tones. So sometimes when you're coming out of things like this, and you've got that line cliche happening, as soon as you put in a jazz chord, it sounds really great in that context. So. You hear that? The richness of the chords start to come through because if those chords were on their own or in the midst of other jazz chords, they wouldn't sound nearly as rich. So you've just got this A half diminished seventh, and these two notes fall in the right hand to there, and then you're just playing a tritone in the left hand, which is this C and F sharp. 
to the G minor 7th, and then we're going to go up the melody. And all we're doing there is playing like a C diminished 7th over F sharp. And then you've got this really full chord. So in the left hand, root, fifth, and third. Might be a little difficult for some of you to reach that, but give it a go. If you can't, just roll it like this, holding the pedal down. What a great sounding chord, because in the right hand, you've got this whole F major six over C, which is a nice chord in itself, and then you put it over this. It just sounds like that. So we're going to go from where it's coming out of that line cliche. Sounds great so far. And then we're moving to this two minor seventh. Now, the tendency for a lot of musicians is just to play a B minor seventh like this, which sounds good. But if all you do is go to the top and put these two notes together, that's really dissonant. But if you put a chord over top of that, listen to that. So this is really harsh. And then you put this, what's essentially an F sharp minor seventh over B, you get this, which is B minor 7th. And then in the left hand, we've had this before, where you've got the tritone here, just of E7. So you've got G sharp and D. Okay, so... Now, all we're doing here is just moving the bass line from G to C. We're, we're keeping all the notes Hear that? And then we're throwing the C7 chord in, but we're doing this really rich one. Listen to that. So this chord is the one that I'm focused on right now, right here. Where we're taking this cluster of notes. So the notes are from bottom to top. D flat, E, F sharp, uh, G sharp and B flat. Listen to that chord. In context, it doesn't sound that great, but when it's a passing chord like this, okay, then we're on to another line cliche, which is really indicated sometimes with the chord changes. So let me bring the pen back here, where you've got an F7 here. So the E natural from the F major 7 is falling to become the 7th of F7. So you've got this line cliche starting to happen. And then it continues on the next line. So let's just scroll down a little bit. And you can see now that you've got those two notes falling and then it keeps going down to the G here and then the F, then the C sharp here. So it's going. And then getting to a D major seventh. Now I know a lot of people might want to play that as a D minor, but it's actually in the melody note is the F sharp. So from the F, F7 to E half diminished seventh to D major seven. Now I've thrown in the 13 here to make it sound a nice, like a nice chord. And then we need to get back up to our melody way up here because we're going up in octaves. We're going to play this two five, which is E half diminished seventh. So I played that like, like this chord over A. So we're just surrounding the chord with an octave and then up to the A7 flat 9. Okay, put it over A. That's why it's an A7, sorry, sharp 9, sharp 5. What a great sounding chord. And then back to the beginning. So let's take it from here. We're going to start from the G minor chord and then go through and hit the first time ending.
Do you hear that line cliche going down? And then two five. And we need to scroll up here back to the beginning. Now what we've got going on there is inner voices. I have other videos about inner voices that talk about what's available. But in this case, you're talking about uh, what's available for a D major seventh chord and these notes, which is the fifth and then the flat six and then the actual major seventh and then the sixth. These inner voices. I'm going to play this on the piano a little bit and you're going to hear how amazing those things sound in context. All right, let's scroll down a little bit and take a look at the bridge. So it's starting on the A half diminished seventh. And try to remember that the chords that I'm writing here are obviously just from my own personal experience. But my goal with this is to get the best sounding introduction with nice rich chords in this rubato feel. So it's, it ended on this D major seventh. And then we're jumping up to the C. So sometimes what you want to do is you play the melody first and then the chord. So I melody's on beat one and the chord is on beat two. And then we've got a couple of passing chords. So those chords are essentially uh, B flat diminished seventh to A diminished seventh. Then a line cliche in the bass. Again, instead of inner voices, you're, you're putting them in the bass. You could probably do it like this. But I think it sounds better just as the bass descending. And you can play that fast or slow, however you want to interpret it. So from the beginning of the line. And then continuing on. Got a G, half to finish seventh. And you can hear all of these inner voices working. Right? So we're repeating what we did with the A half diminished seventh, except now we're doing it with the G half diminished. Keeping an idea going, right? Same type of shape with the chords. So here we have an E flat diminished seventh. It's just a drop two voicing. So this is the root position here. And we're basically dropping the second note from this inversion and putting it in the bass. So instead of this chord, you're taking this note and putting it down here. E flat, drop it. And just a half step up. And here's our line cliche again. Okay, so from the beginning of that line, Now this is the interesting part where now you're going to play in tempo to bring the band in. So you have to kind of count off in your head and then play these passing chords. Okay, so what are we doing there? Well, just playing a D minor chord, a B diminished chord and a D diminished chord, just like that easy chords, and then a B flat seven, 
right? Over B flat, it's basically a B flat 9 and 13 chord, but we're taking the root out of it. And then an A7 with a flat 9. And then D minor in root position. Now, you could play a D minor 7, but it sounds too rich. It's almost like you want to make that last chord really big, and one of the ways to make it big is to make it less rich. Just a solid D minor chord, like this. And then the bass player is going to go like this. And we're going to be playing in tempo at that point. So the goal with these last four bars is to essentially get the rhythm going, make sure everybody understands where you're at, and then you play this root. It's a very Oscar Peterson thing to throw that in on beat two. Again, one more time. Bass player. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is post a link to the sheet music so you can download this and learn these chord voicings and learn this introduction. I'm gonna put that link up here in the corner. And now I'm gonna move over to the grand piano and play the introduction there. And then I'll introduce also how it's going in and working with the trio. So I'll play like maybe a little bit of a chorus of solo so that you can hear the, when the band comes in. Okay, let me go and do that now. 